What's your strategy? Are you using anybody different to get you ready? And after studying and, and dueling with Joe Biden once already, what have you learned? What's going to change? Are you going to interrupt well, Joe us? Joe lies, and he lies a lot. And he'll say things that are crazy. And he'll think people are supposed to believe him. And they take ads, and they put ads in on things that never happened. Uh, far worse than Hillary. Hillary was a much smarter person than him, but they play a much dirtier game. And she was dirty. Look, I mean, with the emails and everything else, I'm not talking about that. That was President Donald Trump talking about Hillary Clinton. Still in 2020. Look, I know, I know, the references are, oh, but this is so dirty. Uh, and they, they take that they take the ads and they say the things that never happen. Yeah, that's that's what every political ad is, almost. I mean, look, uh, I'll sometimes I'll go and you know I'll, I'll turn on the TV and uh, you know I'll listen to like CNN or something. Okay, when I'm trying to sleep, because nothing puts you to sleep faster than CNN. Uh, and I'll see commercials. You know, I'll see these political ads, and I'm like. That's false. That didn't happen. Citation. Uh, and, of course, most of, the, most of the ads that are dishonest are, are generally ads run by the Republicans. Although, of course, uh, and, and, you know, some you know, liberal ads do tend to, like, a little over-exaggerate or something like that. But generally, when you're looking at fake news, it always happens to be Republican ads that are super, super false. And so it is kind of funny projection that he talks about that. The, the ads, the, the, you're so dishonest. They take things that never happen, even though it's literally quoting me uh, from a rally or something, but I just forgot about it. Yeah, that, that'll, that of course, you know, come into play later on. So keep that in mind. Uh, but as far as Hillary Clinton is concerned, no one cares. N nobody cares about Hillary Clinton. Nobody gives a shit. Um, for one, like, for me, as far as I'm concerned... She can go back in the woods, all right? She can go back in the woods and retire and whatever. Uh, be with her grandkids. I don't give a shit, all right? Just, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Uh, now, you're not running against Hillary Clinton, so she doesn't matter. And that's the overall point here. Uh, as far as this election, you got to understand that Joe Biden is actually in a lot better of a position than Hillary Clinton was in 2016. So, and I don't mean, you know, just a polling, right? Because you had polling that generally showed Hillary Clinton being more favorable. Uh, it was unfathomable to people in mainstream media that Donald Trump could actually win. Uh, now, here I think we're doing a slight overreaction that we give Trump a little bit too much credit now. Because what his campaign was, was lightning in a bottle. Uh, it, was a, it was a fluke. It was one of those things where it was like super, super unlikely to happen. And yet it happened. Uh, and so, it's, and now everybody's super freaked out about it. Like, oh my God, what if Trump, Donald Trump wins? Kyle Kalinsky's doing the math on this. And he's like, there's basically no, almost very, very, no, like very small path for Donald Trump to win. And it would have to be extraordinary, way more extraordinary than it was in 2016, when you basically had all the ingredients there for a Trump victory. And even then, it was pretty improbable. That's why it was such a big deal. That's why people are so freaked out, because basically it was the unimaginable, the unfathomable that happened. And so now, like now, well, we've been living in 2020, okay? And, and this has been a pretty messed up year uh, where all sorts of unfathomable things have happened. And so now we're all kind of primed for it, like, what if Donald Trump wins the second term? Oh, son of a bitch. And so there's that. But no, when you do the math and you look at the you you look at the polling, it's actually a lot better for Biden than it was for Hillary Clinton. And so this this weird thing about bringing up Hillary Clinton, it's like the only thing he's got. He's like, remember Hillary Clinton? Remember how how good I'd get against Hillary Clinton and how bad she was, and then the Joe Biden, and then all that. Uh, I, you know, remember that? It was great. I did awesome. I beat Hillary Clinton. Yeah, but who cares? You're not running against Hillary Clinton. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So now, that said, the reason, there are actual, like, factual reasons why Donald Trump is in worse position now 
than Hillary Clinton, for one, or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, than he was in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. And then, of course, for one, is he's got a defendant's record. He's actually got a record now. And it's bad. During a pandemic, um, he's got to defend his basically disastrous response to. Uh, he's also got to defend his disastrous response to the economic recession uh, that his party continues to do nothing about. He's got to, you know, defend himself also against a man, which really, look, Joe Biden's got a lot of problems. If you followed the show during the primary, I pointed them all out because then I was in favor of, of course, Bernie Sanders. Uh, and I still think that Bernie Sanders would be a much, 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 much better president than Joe Biden ever could. Uh, that said, we lost. I lost during the primary. Sad day for me uh, and for all of us burners. And now we're kind of stuck with Joe Biden. And that's bullshit. But okay, whatever. I still voted for Joe Biden. Uh, that said, he's got the advantage of being a man and not having to deal with sexism. And that's a significant advantage. He's also more likable than Hillary Clinton. Uh, and look, one example, by the way, of how uh, sexism does factor into this, or I should say the lack of compared to, comparative to 2016, is during a debate, he told Trump to shut the hell up. Now, for a lot of us, we were like, awesome. That's great. Like, Yes, tell that guy to shut the hell up. There's even t-shirts. It's great. Imagine if that if Hillary Clinton turned over turned around to Donald Trump. It was like, why don't you just shut the hell up? Everyone's hair would be on fire. Like CNN would be like, how dare you, Hillary Clinton? How dare you say that to a presidential contender? No. They would have been like, did you see your Hillary? What a bitch. What a bitch. She's such a mean woman. So understand that that does factor in. Okay. Now, speaking of interruptions, and this is great. Um, Kilmeade is going to, he's going to ask Donald Trump if, since, you know, he didn't get a whole lot of a, a good response during his last debate when he interrupted Joe Biden all the time. Um, they asked him, are you going to change your debate tactics? This was his response. Well, look, I do my own debating. I do fine, and I do my own debating, and a lot of people said I won. If you look at the Hispanic, very interesting, they did a Hispanic population poll, and I was at 77%. And a lot of people thought, look, when somebody stands there and he lies, 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 I like to challenge it at the time because you don't have time to go back. All right, so the short answer is no, he doesn't feel like he needs to change at all. Um, <laughs> in fact, again, there's so much uh, projection here. Uh, and that poll, by the way, completely unscientific. He's like, oh, uh, no, no, uh, the, uh, the poll from the uh, Hispanics, you know, 77%, um, uh, they, they, they really like me. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was completely unscientific. Um, I mean, most of you know, most of you don't even have a lot of faith in the polls. I understand that. And I defended them to an extent because really it matters on methodology. Methodology matters the most in polling. If you have scientific polls, they can at least tell you what direction the country is, is, is tending to tread, okay, or certain demographic groups. The poll that he referenced right there uh, was a Twitter poll. That's it. Uh, which, of course, doesn't reflect reality, much like being on Twitter. Twitter, not reality. If you're taking polling from Twitter, also gigantic grain of salt. Okay, It's not necessarily representative. It's not really a valid Twitter poll, I'm just saying. Uh, that said, there's one more video I want to show you, uh, which is just, you know, more fun here. Let's take a look. Mr. President, just to follow up on what Brian's asking, though, after that first debate, there are many who suggested if you just let Joe Biden share his ideas, America might not be too keen on those ideas. In fact, Ari Fleischer last night on hand, he said the president should interrupt less. Will you change your strategy in this last debate from your first debate? 
Well, I may do that. Actually, the interesting thing, they said if you let him talk, he'll lose his chain of thought because he's gonzo. And I understand that. But I also understand that as he's going down the line and issuing lies, <coughs> you know, generally it's okay to, you know, really attack that. But but there is a chain of thought that, you know, there are, there are a lot of people that say let him talk because he loses his, <coughs> his uh, train. He loses his train. He loses his mind, frankly. <laughs> I just had to show that. Just because his mind is gonzo and then he... He, like, loses his train. Because Ainsley Earhart is, is, is literally coughing right there. Maybe she's got the Rona. Maybe she needs to get herself checked out. Um, I don't know if she has coronavirus or not. <laughs> but he's like, I'm losing my train. Like, he loses his train of thought because his, his mind's gone. And then, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> mm, a little bit of projection there. Uh, I thought that's just a little bit of fun. Uh, but anyway, look, um, he didn't, he didn't prepare at all. He's not going to prepare at all. He's this de next debate. It's going to be like the first one. It's going to be an absolute shit show as always. Uh, but this time there will at least be a mute button. So I look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.